All right. Well, from uh, Elon Musk to Jeff Bezos uh, to, of course, Richard Branson, uh, quite a few folks right now are really trying to stake their claim to space, whether it's for, I guess, commercial reasons, whether it's for industrial reasons, or whether it's for tourism. Our next guest joining us right now knows a lot about that. Craig Curran is president of Dupre. It's a group of travel companies which specializes in, quote, unquote, extreme travel. And, of course, one of the most extreme uh, travel tickets out there these days is a trip into space. Craig, great to have you here uh, on the program. I I'm really fascinated by this. I just want to know, like, how much demand is there out there? Because every time we hear about these launches, it always seems like most of the people on these things, they obviously have some relationship with Elon Musk or with Jeff Bezos or someone else. Are we seeing that broaden out where just regular people, and by regular I mean the people who can afford a ticket, uh, are just now just calling them up and say, hey, I want to be on the next flight? We're absolutely seeing uh, growth in demand. Now, um, the demand is concentrated in a few end users. These are obviously high net worth individuals. Uh, but as this industry matures and more and more product becomes available, we're seeing an increase in demand. And that demand is actually driving an increase in prices from where they started, say, in 2010, 2011, 2012, when uh, uh, Vir uh, Virgin Galactic started. It's, um, you know, it really making uh, a headway into uh, their proof of concept in Spaceship 2. So demand is growing. What about the experience itself? I mean, right now we know a lot of these uh, uh, these flights have been relative, relatively into lower uh, Earth's orbit here. So technically, yeah, you're in space, but it's not like, you know, you're at an astro or something, you know, uh, uh, hurtling through the, the cosmos here. Are, are most of the customers or the potential customers, are they satisfied with that? Is that the experience? That's enough for them? So the whole market is changing, but to answer your question quickly, absolutely it is. So there's a whole section of the market that is even below suborbital. So Space Perspective is uh, launching a uh, space capsule that will go to 100,000 feet. Um, they'll be operational in 2025, uh, we hope. They'll be doing a t uh, proof of concept in their actual uh, test vehicle this year. Um, that'll take eight uh, a crew of eight up to 100,000 feet on a six hour journey where you'll be able to see 450 miles in any given direction and get a real taste of the overview effect. Now the overview effect is really driving a lot of this interest. It's the experience you have when you, you see the earth from off the planet. And if you're in suborbital and you will see the uh, iridescent purple uh, boundary of the earth's atmosphere, um, you get a whole perspective against the complete blackness of space, a whole perspective that we are all one race living on one precious planet mm -hmm. and that we all have to do the best we can to take care of it. That experience um, is going to be uh, available to people with space perspective yeah. um, from 100,000 feet. The suborbital, uh, which will get up to about 300,000 feet, will give you a further view, about 1,500 miles, more of the curvature of the Earth. And so... People are signing up for the product that's available right yeah. now, and those are the two mainstream products. You can go orbital, right? and it is available. Um, SpaceX is taking it up with Axiom Space, where you can uh, uh, go up and visit the space station for from 7 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. And there will be a time in the not-too-distant future where there will be space hotels, there will be space condos, yeah. and um, you'll be able to vacation there. Is that going to be affordable, Craig, at some point? I mean, I know anytime you have these new sort of uh, things, it, it always sort of caters at first to the uh, wealthiest of people. But at some point, maybe the costs start to scale in a way where, you know, maybe an average Joe can scrape together enough money and make a trip out of this. Is that something you see in the near future? Absolutely. So if you look at the uh, parallel to air travel, when air travel started, it was for the very, very affluent, very, very limited um, options for folks. And now you see we can travel anywhere around the world in 12 to 14 hours with a couple of bags. Um, that's going to happen to suborbital and orbital. Now, orbital is a big jump from suborbital in terms of the, um, the things you have to accomplish. The exit speed is about 17,500 miles an hour to get to uh, uh, orbital. Um, suborbital is more in the order of 27, 2800 miles an hour. So the whole lot of different technology involved. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the cost of computing, you know, dropping in half every two years, the exponential growth, when you see the new technology breakthroughs, the new manufacturing processes um, for building these vehicles, materials advances, AI, all of this, there's no question. 
And I always like to joke with people, um, if there's one guy that knows how to bring down the cost, it's Jeff Bezos. Yeah. So if he follows his path with Blue Origin, um, yeah. we, we are and, and all these entrepreneurs and, and folks that are doing this really are envisioning a democratization of space where yeah. it's opened up to the masses. I, I have to ask you a personal question here. I mean, you're not really just a travel agent. I mean, you are, have done a lot of extreme travel yourself, and I'm told that you already have a ticket on one of the Virgin Atlantic flights. Is that true? Do I bought my ticket in 2011, about a year after I started uh, my affiliation with Virgin Galactic. I was so excited by what I was selling to my clients that I went ahead and bought my own seat. So I can't wait to go. I'm hoping to go in 27, early 28. Mm -hmm. um, Virgin Galactic is just finishing up the last of its flights with its spaceship, two class of ships, Unity, that will take place in June. Then they'll be working for the next year or so on development of their Delta class spaceships, which again will be another step in technology. They'll be able to take uh, more uh, uh, six people instead of four per flight. They'll be able to um, cycle faster on yeah. the flights. Um, so all of that's coming, and uh, that should be happening in 26. And I hope uh, 27, early 28, my number will come up. All right. Well, me too. And uh, hopefully we can get you back on well before that. A fascinating topic and a fascinating business uh, run by a fascinating man, Craig Curran there, president of the Prey Group of Travel Companies, uh, helping uh, those tourists who want to take those initial flights out into space.